Uh, welcome everyone to this Exchange for Media Publishers Roundtable powered by Tabula, where we will discuss what it takes for publishers to improve their audience engagement. This is a series of webinars that we have, uh, that we curate with Tabula, one of them, and the discussion today will be around decoding the newer monetization strategies for digital publishers. Without further ado, I want to introduce the esteemed panelists today uh, who will be speaking on the topic. We have Mr. Shawneel Charles, uh, Executive Vice President, Digital Times Now. We have Samat Sharma, Chief Business Officer, Asia Net News. Pradeep Gairola, VP and Business Head Digital, The Hindu. Hemant Jain, Senior EVP and Head of Digital Business, Lokmat. And the session chair today is Mr. Hanan Fajal, Vice President, APAC, Tabula. Thank you very much for joining us today. Over to you, Hanan. Thanks very much, Ruhel, for that introduction and uh, welcome everybody to today's panel. Thanks to all our friends at Exchange uh, for Media for uh, helping us make this possible. So without further ado, the topic of today's discussion stems from a very pressing issue. Uh, we think we gather here so, because as without publishers- Without further ado, the topic of today's discussion stems from a very pressing issue. Uh, we think we gather here so, because- Without further ado, the topic of I think we're getting some background noise, but uh, I will continue. Uh, as publishers, we're challenged more than ever to get uh, consumers' attention. Uh, are we being here? Are yeah, yeah, we being uh, heard yeah, yeah. properly, Hanan? Hanan, it's uh, basically a, it's a repetition of what you're saying. Are we being heard yeah, yeah, properly, Hanan? Uh, so I apologize. I apologize to everybody. Exchange for Media, can you please mute on your end? Uh, Backend team, can you please mute everyone? Because some of the audience has kept it open. Can you please mute everyone? Okay. Okay, great. Sorry for that, everybody. So we, we are gathering here today because as publishers, uh, we're all challenged more than ever to get consumers' attention. Consumers have instant access to a variety of media and wouldn't hesitate to click or tap away if they're not engaged or some, suddenly their attention is swayed elsewhere. So this is what researchers are calling the attention economy. It's an approach to the management of information that treats human attention as a scarce commodity as we the humans become the commodity. So as content has grown increasingly abundant and immediately available, attention becomes the limiting factor in the consumption of information. It directly affects revenue from readers, subscription, membership, so on, as well as that from advertisers who now want some guarantee beyond subscription numbers that users will stay long enough to see their ads and their sponsored content. So today we will speak to our esteemed panelists about improving audience engagement and with that, of course, monetization strategies. And with us, uh, we have Hemant from uh, Lokmat, Pradeep, the Hindu, Shunil from uh, Times and Samarth from Asian News Network. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. So Hemant, we'll kick off with you. Uh, do you see the effects of the attention economy? Do your readers seem to click away faster? Do you see them consume content in a different way than in the past? Can you share a little bit about that with us? Uh, sure, Hanan. Uh, uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I was just going through uh, one of the recent studies which suggested that the average attention span in any case has fallen from 12 seconds in 2000 to what is now seven seconds. Uh, and if you look at most of the news publishers in our country today, uh, the average time spent uh, per user per session is not more than two to three minutes. Uh, I'm talking about uh, 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 an average time spent uh, duration per session. Now, when you look at, uh, when you look at this time spent, it is quite alarming. Uh, and it also has a direct impact uh, on our own strategies in terms of mapping what we are creating to what the consumer is actually wanting in today's age. Uh, and when we just look around, 
uh, you would realize that uh, there seems to be a huge paradox uh, between what used to be, uh, you know, the diktat to the content team to create more longer articles, which are far more richer, beyond 250, 300 words, extending up to 500 words, uh, which is not the case really, you know. And uh, the, other, the other very important aspect is that there has been a considerable shift in the manner in which the content is getting discovered today. So I would say in 1995-96, when we set up IndianExpress.com, which was the first newspaper site to go live, and if I look at the next 10, 12 years then, most of the news used to be destination viewing when people used to key in the destination, say, for example, timesofindia.com, indianexpress.com, etc., the hindu.com. And they used, largely they used to consume content in terms of their basic, uh, you know, uh, connect with a particular news media brand. But today when we look around, there is a huge fragmentation in terms of uh, the platform where the content is getting discovered. And because of this very, very uh, important aspect of a decrease in the attention span, there is a need to completely reinvent ourselves. So for example, when I'm scrolling through yeah, the Facebook feed uh, and I see uh, 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 article links, uh, posts, etc., uh, unless and until the title of the article is extremely catchy, the thumbnail or the feature image kind of resonates with the various aspects of the mind, the way, you know, typically being a retail marketer, I would look in terms of the SKU presence, etc. It is very difficult for you to grab the attention of the user. And that is where, you know, various aspects of pulling the consumer from a point of discovery to your destination plays a very important role. So that's, that's point number one. Point number two is when the guy lands on to your destination, your product, your site, to consume content. I think so in today's time, especially given the fact that 95% of consumption is happening through mobile, it becomes very, very important to ensure that what you serve him is exactly what he's looking out for. Because if the first scroll is about 300 by 250 ad, and then you have got another space below which, which is taken away by huge title, feature image, and then in the second fold lies the content. You miss the customer. Uh, point number three uh, is this whole evolution of short format content. And I'm just keeping my points aligned to the whole uh, concept around attention economy. So we've, we've seen InShots doing extremely well today. We have seen YouTube, Facebook. At one point, they started off with long form contents but you have now seen the emergence of reels and short format content. I think so a lot of things are getting aligned to the core shift in the consumer behavior from ability to spend a longer duration to shorter duration. I think so there is a need to, for most of the news publishers to completely reimagine their businesses to ensure that the core experience on the product, whether it is through content, technology, consumer experience, page layout, enables the consumer to spend more time getting relevant content much faster and through a better packaged environment. Uh, the, the, other, the other very important aspect here is with regard to discovery of content. I, I still have to find someone within our space uh, who's able to uh, help the user discover content very seamlessly. So I don't really find users going on any of the news sites using a search bar to search content. It's not working. It doesn't work. Uh, but yes, uh, voice searches can help. Uh, chatbots, definitely it makes the whole life much simpler. It's much aided. It could be, uh, it could be a voice chatbot. It could be a text chatbot. So it helps you replicate a Google search experience on, onto your own destination portal. Uh, so these are some of the things I believe are very imperative. And uh, I think so in this, in this particular session, 
uh, from where I come, I thought it's very important for all of us uh, since we have, uh, you know, Shawnil, Pradeep. Uh, let's try to reimagine, you know, this whole thing, keeping centered around this topic of discussion of attention economy. Thanks for that, Hemant. And uh, I agree with, uh, with some of the sentiment around innovation. Why don't we move over to you, Pradeep, from the Hindu. Can you share a little bit about uh, the effects of the attention economy on the way you engage with your users and possibly some view on the future? Thanks, Anand. So see, I would like to look at attention economy in three perspectives. One is attention as a scarce commodity, attention as a unit of measurement, and attention as a source of monetization. So as Hemant rightly said that, see, you know, the attention is dropping. So from 12 seconds today, it is about, say, seven seconds. But then this urge for newness, which we are constantly wanting something new, caused, causes us to explore more. So this, this newness piece actually helped the media and content creators started churning shorter and more engaging content. So the total output of content increased and hence the users started spending more time with media. So if you will look at between 2011 and 2021, there's an 18% increase in the time spent with the media, and it is a worldwide, uh, worldwide figure. So in 2021, on an average, world spends 8.25 hours daily with media, which was about 6.98 hours in 2011. Now, when I look at attention as an economy, because fine, this is reducing, how does it impact my life, right? So if you really ask from a Hindu perspective, as a group perspective, we have witnessed the uh, decline of in range of about 20% in the pages per session that the user consumes with us now. The bounce rates have increased by about 8%, right? But you know what happened? We did not realize these things because the overall traffic was increasing substantially and somehow these trends got grown. So, but if you really do some soul searching, you realize that you are not doing a great job with users who visit us and, and somewhere we are still obsessed with social media. We are still obsessed with search engine optimization. So we are doing that. So we have built the teams for search engines. We have built social media teams. But there's no team which is saying that how the hell do I increase the, the time spent with me, the people consuming more pages, you know, like lessing the bound. So, so, so this, is a, this is clearly an area which at least in our case we have ignored. So I think there's an opportunity for us that if we personalize our experiences of our reader, you know, we will be able to do a better job and, 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 and I think, you know, we will be able to arrest a lot of things. Now comes to attention, if I look at attention as a source of monetization, right? So as we all know, at this point in time, we have two large sources, one is advertising and another is subscription, right? So lower attention span actually increase the consumption and hence the impression-based ad revenue streams benefited, in, initially they benefited a lot. So user was consuming more content, they were putting more pages, we had our ad spots there, the, the advertiser was paying, so this in the initial run it worked, right? So, so typically what happened was like, you know, the, however, it, is, it doesn't seem to be working now, right? So what has happened is if you will look at last 10 years, there's a humongous increase in the page views that have been consumed, the number of users which are coming to our website, but are this, is this directly proportional to our revenue? No, it is not. No. So the ad revenue, ad revenue and, and, and the traffic are no longer directly proportional or even if they are, then the yields are, yields are the ones which are really creating a lot more problems for us. I got into digital in 1997, okay? And our yields in 1997 were better than the yields what we have today. Okay. And this is this is where I think you know that lot of lot of a lot of page views, lot of content creation actually started bringing down the yields. So this brings us to the second source of revenue, which is subscription for us. In our case, subscription was about 47% of our overall digital revenue in the last financial year. So a large number of readers who otherwise have a very, very short span of attention are ready to commit to reading high quality, well-researched, longer format content. So, the, so if you will see our case, the maximum conversion happens when people read editorial, which which generally when I was growing as a student, I found them pretty boring and all that. But you know, like the, the great thing about here is that people actually pay for it, right? So lots of companies these days have even started publishing that to read this article, you will need so many minutes and all that. And our own research says that there's a large correlation between length of content and the willingness to pay. So we produce one content, which is a full page content, grounds you every Saturday. 
and that is one area where whenever people jump for it it's about a 3-4000 piece of content we have another web magazine called frontline which is a long format content so long form content is doing dramatically well when it comes to subscription right so now the challenge for us is ad economy benefits from short attention while the subscription subscription economy benefits from the willingness of reader to commit their attention to content that is relevant to them right so our challenge today is that there how do we cater to these two opposition opposing universe one universe wants very very short form content another universe and which is which can be monetized through advertising another universe demands a very very large format deep content so this is a challenge we as a publisher have to really solve when it comes to attention thanks for that very uh, deep answer i think that one of the things that i most appreciate from your comments is the need for from an audience perspective the new the need for newness and that need for newness drives exploration and that exploration is what um is driving pretty much a lot of content discovery um on that page so from our perspective i would say to that that we tabula through our algorithms our technology we strive to continue to provide publishers with the tools that you require uh, in order to continue to effectively engage with the audiences and um, of course we also don't require a third uh, party cookie but we'll get uh, to that uh, a little bit later in the hour so given that we've established that the attention economy is is or rather the lack of attention economy is 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 right there could you talk a little bit uh, shunil about how you see the future of news consumption uh, what are the tools and methods uh, that you employ to make sure that you know you're top of mind uh, for your readers what are the other ways you keep your audience attention and monetization while reducing the reliance on advertising dollars shunil Thanks, Anand. Thank you for having me. And uh, you know, it's a great panel. Uh, Hemant and Pradeep have made some very valid points. They, they're both working for huge, very credible publishing houses in India. So I just, you know, I I want to just you know add to some of the stuff they said, which is uh, to just sort of highlight some of the challenges which we're dealing with. And as we proceed in this chat, I'll probably you know we'll all collectively be able to recommend solutions and talk about how we can you know deal with those. So on the audience side, what I have seen, I've been doing this for about ten years, you know, in a couple of big, major publishing houses. We, our audience, you know, and it's, you know, I just want to put this out there that it's not becoming easier. You know what I've seen over ten years, like he mentioned, our yields are lower than they were ten years ago. It's not just on the yield front. Everything, you know, somehow becomes more complicated year on year, and you know, monetization uh, is also one, uh, you know, following the same trajectory. So what, what? what some of the thoughts which i have wanted to share you know with your audience and you know what 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 uh, publishers are dealing with right now is the audience become very promiscuous okay we uh, like some like him had mentioned earlier there was a lot of brand loyalty earlier we had a lot of direct traffic a lot of pages per session that's becoming lesser and lesser we are in a situation where uh, a lot of uh, content is being churned out by you know the desks each newsroom has its desks and you know it's very similar and most people now you know if you go to if you if read a uh, you know a few news stories and you go and ask them after a little while you know where exactly where did you read that news they're not really able to pinpoint exactly where they picked it up you know the contents contents very very similar so this is something which uh, you know we have, we have to spend a lot of time then working on brand and uh, you know the second point which all of us have worked on over the years is quality of content but unfortunately that that becomes really difficult when your newsroom to a very large degree is actually writing to service algorithms not to service humans okay this is a, a very pertinent point i want to you know raise that you know a lot of our discoverability is happening on on through search or through social and they have set the norms for what your mobile page has to look like and you know headline image summary scroll depth i think you know we are seeing it becoming less and less i think people are reading two paragraphs and bouncing out you know in most cases and uh, subscription is early days i'm very impressed with what the hindu has done and you know it's one of the trailblazers here in this country times is also working on it but it's going to be a slow and steady climb for us to pick up on on uh, on subscription monetization and um, 
So this is just a summary of some of the things which I'm seeing, you know, the ecosystem evolving towards. I'm not saying that there are no solutions. There are, you know, a, a lot of things which all of us are working on. There's great tech coming into the ecosystem from, you know, partners like Taboola, et cetera. So, you know, algorithms aren't just bad. They are good as well. But, um, but um, you know, just, just, just to summarize, uh, you know, the attention economy, et cetera, something we've been seeing for a long time. And uh, 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 I think some of the panelists have spoken up more, more towards our text effort. Okay, a lot of our efforts are on text, but at the Times Network, uh, we spend a lot of uh, time and resources uh, delivering video content, video news, right? That's that's probably one of our primary objectives. And there, the attention economy is, you know, most obvious. The, you know, the the uh, there's a huge there's a new animal out there called the three second viewer. Uh, you know, this they come in, they are happy with consuming three seconds and leaving. You know, then that makes it so complicated for creating a business model around it, but that's what it is, and and I'm sure we'll figure out some way to to work around that. Thanks, Sunil. I I most identify with the three second uh, user uh, uh, comment, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Samar, yeah. over to you. Speak to us a little bit about how you're driving this uh, from your perspective uh, at uh, Asian News. So, uh, you know. Uh, firstly, thanks uh, for having me here, Hanan, and pleasure to be uh, with all the esteemed uh, guests. Now, uh, I think fairly valid points by uh, Hemant, and you know, specifically, I'll, I'll just uh, you know pick out uh, one thing that Shunil mentioned, right? And uh, the fact that we are we are we are we are serving algorithms, right, mm -hmm. more than uh, the humans, right? uh, as much as, and and you know how and what uh, this is happening. So let me let me just throw you some light, some some light on you know uh, the three second view, right? For instance, that's that's one side of the story. Right. The other side is that TikTok records forty five minutes a day, right? Yeah. So and the other side is that you know TikTok records forty five minutes per day. On a, on a session uh, in, in, a, in a day uh, allowing you know users to consume it could all well be uh, you know that they're coming from different sources or getting discovered from different uh, areas having said that uh, you know what is important I think that we that we need to do which is not happening too much and we're sort of focusing at Asian it is you know instead of telling the user a lot okay this is the ad this is the content this is what you like this is what i've got from retargeting and all of that there's there's quite less of listening from the user uh, purpose uh, as well right so so that side of things and that side of the story right via interaction or via comments or whichever way uh, videos uh, for instance form a, a big uh, big part of this uh, strategy, right, uh, as well. You know, when, when you see, uh, for instance, whenever you see YouTube, right, uh, for that matter. Now, this attention economy, what it's doing is, it's sort of moving in very aggressively into the psyches, right? So when you see, for example, a YouTube video auto plays itself, right? Uh, outside of that, when you see watching a game, the music starts permeating into your conscience even before the game begins. Right, so that those are the techniques that we're using to convert sort of a three second or to a 10 second or at best on, and you know, how and when then that opens up other uh, avenues uh, as well. So I think one thing is uh, around uh, listening more to the users. The other thing, other point uh, that I'd like to mention would be, you know, the, the particular shift of the audience segments that we were catering to say 10 years from now. We used to have, we used to hear that buzz word of 18 to 24, 18 to 24 is here, there and everywhere. Now that dude is 28 to, you know, <laughs> and that, uh, that, that's a shift that's been made. And it's not that your 18 to 24 don't exist now. On the other hand, you have another generation, the Gen Z, which is sort of 10 years, even younger. And they are consuming content and they form a bulk of your, your users as well. So, you know, uh, adding to the challenges that we had to cater to a particular uh, set of audience, okay, this is my audience pool, this and that. The cohorts have changed and they've become more deeper in terms of, you know, low and high output, more than this age group, this uh, geographies and, 
and then i think that's that's one way we are looking at it and we're trying to cater to i mean you know because otherwise if you're catering to geos and demogs and all the other 25 uh, parameters that ga would throw at you you'll end up nowhere right uh, if you have, if you were to sort of club them together in terms of you know all all the people here in this call i uh, believe revenue is of prime most importance so uh, you know if you were to put it in terms of the arpu this thing right uh, you have you have a huge bulk of people right that's that's in the lower arpu sector you cater to them at the same time the trade off being maintained uh, for the premium uh, users and which, which are less of them and they will give you your time spends and all the all the metrics that we've grown up uh, watching right but uh, i think the, for us the strategy at asian at we are we are evolving more around these two cohorts uh and trying to see how much of it we can overlap with uh the audience uh demo the information and you know other uh, parameters that we that we get from our uh, various partners including tabula so we're trying to balance these two things out and uh, taking it from there and you know immediacy constant uh, i mean personalization right uh, one of the guests mentioned a uh, personalization part right these two three things have to go hand in hand along with your data horizontal sort of that overlays of the same information so so yeah i mean that's that's where we are uh, uh, sort of planning out uh, things and obviously learning from uh, fine gentlemen out there as well uh, and and tabula for that matter so uh you know it's 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 been a pleasure so far but it's it's changing with every year with every year is also an uh, a bit of an overestimation i think uh, with every 6 months uh with the covid and pandemic going out third wave fourth wave god knows what so uh so that adaptability having a nimble and an agile team is what we are sort of moving towards uh more and more each passing day I truly appreciate that Samarth and I totally identify and I think that from maybe from every year every half year I think possibly every quarter we pivot and change and focus and 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 revisit and it really connects very well to what you were saying earlier about having a little bit more sophisticated user segmentation different cohorts how do we how do we pivot and change and curate the experience the content experience the page experience to every single type of user so i think that's a very a very uh, uh, strong point and i also identify deeply with writing content for algorithms and i think that from our perspective at tabula we we strive to continue to build tools and technology that drive specifically that and put the user in the middle so our tools for editorial teams like newsroom what insight does that give them on where the interests of the users lie just in the in the space and how we can curate content to drive that engagement and then ongoing discovery so thank you both uh, shanil and samart for for your uh, comments on this topic so speaking of of users and younger users like uh, like you started out um you know many teens these days my my own teens included will consume their content from social media and you know the likes of many many outlets that that we all are familiar with and i on the other hand go to my favorite news website possibly websites to several times today to check on on what's happening but the kids who are now 15 they have no idea about you know what is a a, web, a news website and 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 how does that operate so my question i guess to the forum at this point is 20 years from now when our 15 year year olds are are 35 how do you think they'll get their news how do websites protect themselves uh, if people get are able to obtain news from non news generating platforms over to you hemant i think so this is a very very interesting part of our conversation today because i've got two 15 year olds in my house boys and uh, if you ask them news the definition of news is very different so uh, so for my younger one uh, he is a soccer geek and for him news is equal to anything around soccer uh, across the world right and is there anything else which interests him uh maybe in and around 10 15 20% here and there uh you ask my elder one uh who's a gaming geek 
for him, news is equal to anything which is happening in the world of gaming. Now, to start off with, in my view, firstly, this entire definition of news, what it would mean to them would, in my way, go through a huge shift. So even if you look today, you have uh, products, uh, news products which are available, which are called uh, new gen uh, new gen content sites, which is BuzzFeed and Scoop, Witty Feed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, uh, it's not that they don't uh, cover the mainstream uh, news, current affairs, things which are breaking out, which are developing during the day, uh, but the format of uh, writing content is very different, uh, which is which is what is called as creating site content, which is picking up the story and going a little sidetrack on that in terms of investing on research and trying to give you a different view in terms of consumption. So, so the point number one I wanted to make is the whole essence of what we define as news today would definitely go through a huge shift tomorrow. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, uh, for all those who would continue to consume news, so uh, sometime back, a couple of years back, I went to a school of journalism in Noida, and I was addressing a batch of, say, 120, 130 young journalists who were about to pass out. So I said, hey, I'm sure all of you watch news. So all of them said, yes, 100% of them, they watch news, they read news. So I said, uh, when you have to... Uh, when, when you have to read news or watch news, what's your most, uh, uh, which is your favorite channel? So most of them were like Arch Tuck and Times and this. So I said, wow, that's nice. So I said, when you want to watch uh, entertaining news, uh, no, so I asked them, so uh, uh, when do you watch uh, 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 the other one of India Today, which is the one? Uh, uh, Sorry, I just skipped it. The, what are you thinking of? Uh, the uh, Shawnee, which is the other brand of uh, India today in Hindi. Today. In Hindi. Uh, these, uh, these, these. No, 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 no. The one which is uh, more towards top. the young. Lullant Top. Lullant Top. Sorry, Lullant Top. So they said, yes, we, when we want to watch entertaining news, we go to Lullant Top. But when I want to watch very serious, credible source of news, then his choice of channels are very different. So... So if you look at globally today, what's happening, your top four tech companies in Silicon Valley, they are all investing behind creating a news product. So Google recently launched Showcase in India. You have Apple, which is there out with News Plus, Microsoft investing in AI ML to build the next generation of news product. Uh, so everyone is out there building news because they realize that news is important because of the frequency of consumption. While they would continue to be the primary uh, platforms for content discovery and creation, uh, content discovery, but the core brand uh, would continue to stay and extend further. So whether you look at uh, Lokmat when it comes to Marathi, or you look at Hindu, uh, Malayala Manorama, I don't think so they're going to perish over the next 20, 30 years. But the way and the manner in which the content is going to get discovered is going to be different. So we are moving into connected device, wearables. So there are going to be very newer ways in which these forms of content will get discovered. But still, some of these old age news media brands, they would continue to exist. And over the next 20 years, they themselves would have reinvented. Now, now uh, just to give you a small example, Hanan, it's just been a four-year journey at Lokmat, so from print to digital. And I think so, uh, we just didn't do print to digital, we did print to digital to video. So uh, with a very, very lean team structure, today we are the second largest news and infotainment network in Marathi language video network on Facebook. So if you talk about ABP, which is the largest television channel in Marathi, ABP Maza, that's the number one video network on Facebook. We are number two. We are larger than some of the television network. Now, uh, why? Because the kind of content we create, whether it is for YouTube or Facebook, 
it's not a volume play it's a value play so if you are able to even create 5 to 8 pieces of content in a day but you are delivering value to your user the content gets automatically discovered and shared so i want to bring back the premise of the conversation saying in the in the news media business content will continue to take the priority seat when it comes to any kind of business or uh, economics which has to be created around it uh like if i ask all of you today what is your unit economics of the business if you ask me personally i would say the article page in today's economy i am not talking about video i'll come yeah. to that separately now you would ask me why would i say that unit economics of my business is an article page because the more a user comes and consumes article page it adds up to my saleable ad inventory yeah and uh, even today there are advertisers who ask us that how much would it take to advertise on home page and then you go through the educative journey of explaining you explaining the advertisers that dude today the guy lands up on the article page and not on the home page so so it is very very important uh, as a news media owner for you to create a very very firm objective and a model around which you want to build your business for example for some of the publishers in india they are very clear they do not want to distribute content on a multimedia platform like on uh, like on social media platforms and news aggregator platforms because they believe that they have to become the destination for users to come and consume content in my view however hard you might try news is more or less a commodity so the more you are able to distribute your content across multiple platforms and it becomes very easy to discover the more and more you start creating a connect with the consumer given the fact that the quality and the standards of content uh, remain the same Simon thank you for that and i think that what i most identify with is the, what you were saying in your opening comment around what wait a minute let's just redefine and calibrate on what is the definition of news i think that that is quite a strong view uh, on the topic shunil over to you in 15 20 years our 15 year olds of today where where are they going to be when they consume news you know it's as um nightmare scenario for me to try to think of you know 15 20 years from now i have no <laughs> clue you know what this bunch is i have two kids at home their consumption patterns are nothing you know like which you can predict or you know what they how they consume it but just coming back to news see news news will remain ubiquitous credible journalism is important you know some of the folks who are on this call represent some of the best media houses in the country if not the world so we know you know that's a very important service which we are doing it's also you know complicated expensive and all the other you know aspects which go into gathering and disseminating news coming uh, you know back to digital and you know i just want to press upon a monetization point this is, this is a monetization discussion you know about about i think 6 7 years you know the original tabula team ran etc came in and showed us the newsroom product and you know we saw it and you know uh, we we liked it at that point in time uh, you know what i'm trying to say is that uh, this is a time where we have to reinvent our newsrooms as well especially the digital newsrooms you know these are these uh, these uh, uh, have been uh, large groups of people sitting in one location you know sometimes in noida churning out eight articles per day you're trying to hit your caps of 5 600 articles you know for the day i think that model has to evolve now and using tools like newsroom so the the idea you know what i'm trying to say is that we should not be chasing comscore glory anymore you know uh, the whole logic that more page views means more money that is over okay of course you know, you, you have to grow in users and page views as you become a larger site but the the you know there's it's just you know there's so much oversupply that at some level the yields are down and you know we've complicated it by by basically creating a situation of oversupply and that's very evident in our non english businesses as you at the bula would also see that it's there's just so much supply it's difficult to you know monetize it well hopefully that will change but uh, what i want to you know again emphasize is that now in the newsrooms you have to dissect your newsrooms at the at the highest level 
you have to do justice to the brands we represent and the highest quality content that flow should not stop at all but that's not necessarily the content which will make you a lot of money a lot of us have seen that some of our entertainment desks are the most valuable you know i know you know from our uh, relationship with tabula the more entertainment content we send tabula our monetizations higher so you know uh, it's what i'm trying to say is that it's a good opportunity right now to drill down into our newsrooms not to chase you know uh, the billion pages and the you know you know hundreds of millions of unique visitors like we've been doing uh, you know just single mindedly in that direction but somehow now strike the right balance with the right partners on monetization as well you know we're not only going to get you know uh, you know uh, kudos and appreciation now for unique numbers because i think post covid monetization has come much more into the forefront as a success metric than you know only the audience metrics which most businesses were looking at earlier so i think that's that's a little you know nugget of information i just want to share from the way we are looking at our business is we basically relooking at our our newsrooms desks and units which uh, where we are seeing better yield and you know better monetization you know from partners like you know and you know not just the banners but even even partners like the pola so that that's a that's a concerted effort going on and i think slowly slowly most newsrooms will make efforts in that direction Uh, Actually, Hanan, Hanan, I, yeah. sorry, I had a point uh, here to make on Shonil's comment. Uh, so, Shonil, what uh, you know, we have observed that the moment your page views go down, and here I'm not talking about Comscore inspired page views. Yeah. Here I'm talking about genuine consumer-led page views. Uh, we have seen a direct proportional rise or fall in network revenues the moment your page page views go down. because okay. your tabula ads are uh, served below your article your in stream uh, widget is placed in between the article so the moment your number of article read or page views go down your third party network revenue automatically gets impacted see uh, see the reason being your direct revenues will always be a small percentage of your entire filled inventory but yes. the network revenues become fillers so so i fundamentally believe that when it comes to unit economics of a news business uh, the article page or the page views become very very imperative true true no i, I would also you are you are absolutely right i just was trying to say that at a newsroom level at a desk level it makes sense to now identify the valuable desks staff those more where you're garnering higher yield push more content you know because this is a monetization discussion if it was an audience discussion you know you would have had a different thing but i'm just saying that there bears merit because a lot of us have staffed languages teams okay i'm, I'm not talking about only languages you know people who are only in one vernacular language but you know for instance at times we do 14 languages you know maybe 12 out of those 14 are not that profitable as like to be but i say in the future as we evolve i think an effort can be made using the tools available to us you know which which can help uh, newsrooms become more efficient for monetization sure i think that as we speak about the unit of economics and and the article page and the user engagement and the associated revenue with it and and we look of, at least from our perspective when we look at you know how can we drive value to publishers to continue to do what you guys are doing not only from an audience but also from a monetization perspective we tie those those two in together so it's it's pretty much what you guys have been saying about the type of content that i'm writing and how much of it am i writing and and publishing so certainly there there's a, there's something of an ecosystem to be discussed over there plus i think that you know with a product like tabula news from our perspective is that we are also not only trying to do stuff on the page together with our publisher partners but we're also trying to help disseminate uh, your content and your articles to fresh new audiences so that they are either discovering the brand or deepening the relationship with the brand and by bringing those new users we're trying to make the pie all the more bigger for for each publisher respectively so the innovation uh, of go- what goes on the page as well as what goes off of the page uh, in india currently vivo phones huawei phones and and, and other so certainly that for us will remain a focal point and we continue to try and support in the best way possible
From so, monetization perspective, Haran, we had a very, very yep. unique experiment which we did last year. So last Tell year, we, so we had about, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Uh, yeah. go ahead. So till last year, we used to have separate print team and we used to have a separate digital team. So digital, there were about 15 odd people. So what we did was we created, merged these sales force and we created a digital team. And the result was that we got about 120% increase in the direct ad sales revenue, right? And this was at the time which the India was facing one of its worst time as far as the digital, you know, digital advertising business is concerned. Right? And, and this is continuing for us. So like in the, if you will see this quarter, we will, our direct sales business will be about 150% more than the last quarter, or, uh, same quarter last year. So, I'll so sign for that. Aging, you know, what we have done today, we have started a, something called Digital Center of Excellence in the Hindu Digital Learning Academy. So this, this center of excellence picks up a handful of sales team members, puts them into six week intensive hands-on digital sales training and aims to build a formidable sales force that can solve problems faced by the advertisers, right? So we feel that, you know, like there is a, there is a large opportunity in actually pooling the resources of the organization, solving the problems for the, you know, advertisers and, and in the process create a fairly good, uh, 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 unlock a lot of value. So this was our own, you know, like uh, our own uh, experience when it comes to the revenue from our direct sales force. Thanks for that addition, Pradeep. I think that the uh, digital is certainly the most in innovative word I've heard today. <laughs> so, Let's let's take a step out for a minute of the monetization strategy and possibly the 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 individual digital property and speak a little bit about um, let's speak about like industry changes. So last year Google announced two updates: Core Web Vitals and Chrome no longer supporting third-party cookies. Pradeep, how are you guys preparing for these changes? Tell us a little bit about that. See, like core vitals actually is not really a large challenge because most of it, what they are talking about, HTTPS, mobile friendliness, safe browsing, that was actually, I think all the publishers were quite uh, on, on it. But the challenge for us was the, the very, very large advertising, intrusive interstitials and all that. So that's the only piece as far as the core vitals are concerned, which we are we have to address. So our teams are now working very closely with the advertisers. And once Google announces, even advertiser listens. So when we go and tell them, don't put a larger ad, they may have a lot of opposition to it. But when Google says, most of the industry listens, which is a great part of it. I think our biggest challenge is cutting down, shaving down this one second of download time. That's a nightmare. So, you know, so like you do whatever it is, one second can make so much of difference. And the complexity for us happens because there are a lot of third party scripts working on the site. So that's the complexity for us to solve. But balance, I, the, the uh, web vitals is not a larger challenge. The larger challenge will be the third party uh, cookies. So if you look at it, what is basically cookie doing for us? It is helping us do a targeted advertising, right? So if it helps us targeted advertising and it is basically it has a root in the data collection. So we have three implications. One, what will happen to our programmatic revenue? Right? So the programmatic world is dramatically data reliant, right? And this is an ecosystem which is likely to change very dramatically once this uh, Google stops uh, third party cookies. And at this point in time, we have a large uncertainty about the ecosystem, right? So we would really look up to people like Tabula to guide us and say that, okay, how do we really you know, work with you guys and try to see that we have a lesser impact on the programmatic, eco, you know, pro programmatic advertising piece. Second part is we also feel that maybe your our dependence on the big tech will increase, but the good factor there is we work closely with the big tech companies, so maybe you know it's a it's an area which is uh, which may not really be a large shakeup for us. And thirdly, I think you know this data platforms which are there will they be ready to really emerge to really solve our problems? Is third thing which watch for. So so given this, what are the implications? So we are saying that what could be an alternative of cookies? So we are figuring out that. So we feel that there will be some alternative to cookies will emerge and you know cross-site tracking, tracking might happen. There will be a lot of, so ad, tech, ad tech ecosystem is fairly large. There are a lot of smart players like you guys itself, right? So I think there will be some problems is what we believe alternative to cookies might come in. We feel the app advertising will grow phenomenally because that's a, that's a very, very, that's a world which is very, it's a, it's a wall, wall garden. So to a certain extent, it's a much more higher logging rate. People spend a lot of time. So we, so we are preparing for that. We feel that you know, like the our own data, which at this point in time is not of much importance because we actually do not have too much of data, will 
advertiser may start looking at it at a with more interest i think login is compulsory logging is an idea which we are trying it's very high risk in india so we would want to like you know we are we will be prepared for it but if all the larger publisher ecosystem starts believing that uh, you know login is compulsory maybe we will move that and finally i think universal ids is something which if all the publishers come together maybe we can create our own universal ids and uh, you know safeguard against so basically in the long term we will build our data capabilities so that you know but that's a long term it's not a short term game a short term game we have a very very maybe 2 3% people data we have that's not really going to work but long term it is a we need to build data capabilities and short term maybe these are the things which are likely to happen thanks for that pradeep samarth what do, can you share with us a little bit around the, the changes that you see with the two google releases please yeah so uh, i think uh, you know the four web vitals part uh, that sort of uh, hasn't had as much as an impact like uh, you know pradeep also mentioned as much as the third party uh, cookies being blocked right on chrome uh, specifically now that's not like this is uh, an absolute surprise that has come it has been around the news and floating around until it has eventually happened uh, other browsers already had it for instance uh, safari firefox way way uh, before right? and frankly uh, you know what it, what it what it takes to uh, takes every every all of us to we still have we, we we then have to find ways of of monetizing our first having first party data right eventually it will come down to that whichever way uh, you look at it either by via uh, sign ins or uh, you know other ways uh, we will have to generate and and have uh, enough first party data like a lot of advertisers are moving towards it uh, as well right a long, since a long time now they have their own set of audience they will to uniquely identify and they keep targeting them serving at so our audience pools and so on and so forth right not to say that you know over a period of time that uh, you know the publishers uh, will also have to uh, have to move to that also you know it's not like the third party data is is cookies are going away they're going to still remain within the browser just that uh, they're not being exposed uh, to to a set of stakeholders right now what does that mean so there could be a browser based model that could evolve right basis the browser and the interaction within that space how do we interact with the the big tech and and find a way to uh, sort of get access to that information right also uh, you know they're also coming up uh, with the uh, cohorts right rather than a very specific user level targeting you can mirror certain sets of audiences basis behavior and all of that and target on 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 those parameters rather than getting more specific it's not like it will be an absolute uh, end of the road obviously the the nets would be cast far far wider than they were uh, in in the past so uh, in in that sense uh, yeah i mean see also it's 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 coming on the back of a big issue that the entire world is facing around the the user privacy data privacy and that's that's the fundamental reason why why this thing is happening at some point it will make the audience and the users understand that this is what they gain out right and then get into a consensual way of providing access to their information and slowly evolve in that zone so that translates into more of first party data uh, for you which which obviously can be monitored at a much higher rate as all of us know so so this shift will also happen on the audience side as well over a period of time and the gathering of uh, uh, you know this kind of uh, information which is which is for first party right and and you know some publishers uh, for instance vox right and new york times uh, they 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 already have their own ad targeting systems based on the first party data right so this is this is a place this is zone wherein a lot of smaller publishers would face the heat uh i feel a lot a lot more uh because in the absence of uh, because you're just reducing the percentages right now right when your absolute number goes down the percentage becomes really minuscule and uh, and and from that uh, perspective also the identity based uh, uh you know in uniquely identify if you're able to identify a user and we track via that and we go and uh you know take that step uh, already initially and then we move out 
to all our other ways of targeting. Uh, that's that's possibly the way uh, for it, uh, that, as far as we see it uh, with us. All right. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful discussion. I want to thank my panelists, Mr. Charles, Mr. Sharma, Mr. Gairola, and Mr. Jain uh, for joining us today. And I want to hand it over to Mr. Hanan Fajal for the last comments. Over to you. I'd like to thank everybody for participating today. Thank you to our friends at Exchange for Media who helped moderate uh, today's event. Thank you to our esteemed panelists. Thank you very much to the Tabula marketing team, to Suita and Ran. And thank you, of course, to our publisher account team uh, for the India market, Garvita, Richard, and Neha for all of your contribution and for taking such good care of our publishers every day of the year, and especially during these times. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. See you next time. Be well, be safe.